to see you. You made it through the hurricane. I lost power for a day. I'm like smelling all of the fumes from my neighbor's generators, thinking, hmm, that's not how I want to get to know my neighbors really well, but you know, you discover new things about people. Hey, you notice the promo we put on there about the Holy Spirit night? That's this Wednesday night. Um, Steve Nicholson really has uh, led the charge for the Vineyard uh, USA. We, I've gotten to know him for the last, I guess, two, three decades. And uh, really, Shannon and I, we don't know anybody who moves in the gifts of the Spirit like he does. That's why we invited him down. We, we're, we're flying him in from Chicago. You won't want to miss it. It's, it's great. Um, uh, it can be a, you know, if you're, if you're new to the move of the Holy Spirit, um, uh, you want to, you know, kind of buckle up and, cause God does things, you know, it's not, we're not in charge, you know, we're, we're, we're just letting the Lord do things. And, and, uh, so, uh, this isn't the time to run from God. This is the time to run to God and, uh, would love to have you come this Wednesday night, uh, to see what God does. Uh, not just in our church, but it, and it, it, God, I think, will have a word for you. So everybody gets prayed for if you want to be prayed for. Uh, it, you know, we're not going to leave early, uh, so we'll, we'll definitely want to uh, uh, intersect with you at that point. So, well, listen, if you're joining us online, we're so glad that you're, you've chosen Vineyard and to be part of our service. And, and uh, we are in a series that we started a few weeks ago. You asked for it. And we did a survey a few months back, said, hey, if, you, uh, if, you, if you'd like to hear us talk about something, what would it be? And we had a number of different responses. One of those was about raising kids. You know, how do you raise kids in this environment and, uh, in, in today and the challenges of today? And so we, I, we're going to talk about that today. I, if you don't have kids at home, I don't want you to check out. I really think God will use each one of us, because it really takes a village. It's more than just one isolated thing. It's, there's a lot that goes into it. And, uh, and, and, and I think that all of us play a role. Sometimes I think families, we, we get this idea that, you know, like the Beatles, you know, like all it takes is love, you know, kind of like this philosophy that that's all it takes. And that's not all it takes. That you're mistaken if you think it, if you just shower your kids with lots of love, that's all they need in life because that is, there's more to it than that. The Bible says that it takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to have a good family and it takes understanding to make it strong. Solid families are not are, are, don't happen by accident. It's, it's methodical decisions. It's, there's wisdom that goes into it. Now, some parents, when they're raising kids, they are able to just raise kids intuitively, instinctively. Some parents, they had uh, good role models, and so they just kind of do what their parents did. But a lot of us, when we're raising kids, we don't have that. It's not instinctive. It's not intuitive. We don't really have good role models. And so that, that's when we really need uh, wisdom. Wisdom plays a, 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 a strong and important part of that. So how to have a healthy family. Well, let's look at that. Four things. Number one is uh, a healthy family prepares kids for life. We teach them foundational things. It becomes like a, a center for learning. We learn things in, in our homes that we learn that, you know, we don't learn anywhere else. Basic life skills. Sometimes that's missing. And, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're an employer and you're thinking, you know, sometimes an employee comes in and you go, that's a basic life skill you should have learned in your family. And they didn't. But, but it, very, it begins at the very beginning, right? We learn in a family, uh, you know, how to walk. In fact, just this past week, my granddaughter turned one, and she, right after she turned one, it was like her little cue, like, okay, I need to walk now. And so we got that on video. I, I hope that's okay. I want to show it to you. Uh, so she's learning to walk. Here it is. See, each step. 
There we go. Oh, well, listen, you got to start somewhere. She started with a few steps, and you guys got to see it. <laughs> and in a family, not only do we learn our first few steps, but we learn how to eat. We learn important skills like how to use the TV remote, you know, how to use our cell phone, basic life skills. Here's what the Bible says. It says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, favor with God, favor with men. So those are the four things. Four things really as parents, we need to make sure we're instilling in our kids all four of those areas, the, the mental or the intellectual part, the physical part, that there's a, you know, stature and, 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 and health in our, in our bodies, spiritual part, favor with God, and then social part. Those are four, four parts that are so important that we need to have in balance in our life, which we'll look at next week. Having, having those in balance uh, so that, you know, that's a big part of how we, how we succeed in, in, in life, and that is learned in the home. In fact, it's really part of the job description of a parent. If you took part in a conception, you immediately get a job description with that. Okay? And that's and here it is. It says you must teach these commandments to your children and talk about them when you are at home or out for a walk at bedtime and the first thing in the morning. So the first thing you want to see is, is it's not the government's responsibility to teach uh, your kids if you're a parent. It's not the school it's not a club, and it's not even the church. The Bible says it's your responsibility if you're a parent, and that is not optional. It's something you are required to do by God. He expects you to do it, and that you teach them. And, you know, if you're a parent, you're teaching all the time. Uh, sometimes we're not, we forget that, you know, but the kids are watching, and so a lot of the teaching we do is through modeling, it means way more to kids uh, what they see and, and see you do rather than what they hear you say. And so you, you have to ask the question, what am I teaching? And it says, hey, these are commandments, not suggestions. These are, God has things that he needs uh, for us to do. He wants us to do. We need to do in order to be successful. And that's why he says, you know, he doesn't call them the 10 suggestions, right? It's the 10 commandments. And these are important. And so these are the things that we learn in a home. What do you learn from a family? Well, uh, one of the things we learn is relationships. And here, relationships are so important. I think we know that. Relationships determine a lot of your happiness in life. I mean, the more you're good at relating to people and uh, resolving conflict and being aware of What's going on in people around you, you know, what they call today, you know, the uh, uh, EQ, you know, your, your, your emotional quotient, your ability, you know, to sympathize and connect with people. That plays a huge role in, in your own personal happiness and the happiness of your family. And so where do you learn that stuff? Well, part of that happens in a home, in a home. And if you were raised in a dysfunctional home, then when you become a parent, you have to kind of sometimes relearn. How do I make this work? How, do, how, how can I uh, resolve conflict and, and, and be aware of, uh, be more compassionate, be more aware of people's uh, needs? Well, the Holy Spirit works in us. God gives us instruction and God's at work in our lives and we can uh, teach that to our kids. Second is character. Character is super important. This is formed in, home, in our home, and character is the sum total of the choices and the habits that happen in our life. That's why, as parents, we have a chance to help uh, guide them in their choices and help form some habits in their lives. Good habits often can be, can be really reinforced at home, and then values. Values are what we're saying, this is really what's important in life. This is, I mean, because we're all prioritizing and, 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 how, and spending our time, our money, our energies on things, and what, what we say is not always what we do. What we do is what we really value, though. And so we're always trying to bring congruency so that what we're saying about our values matches what happens in our life. And we have values, we have priorities, things that we think are important about work, about 
people about sex, about school, about our career, about retirement, about our future, about God, all kinds of things, and we're communicating that all the time. The Bible says, one generation makes known your faithfulness to the next. And so part of our responsibility as parents is communicating about God's goodness, that God cares for, uh, for, for you, you know, to, to telling their kids, God cares for you. One of the challenges that, um, that sometimes parents have is, is they go, well, you know, I'm going to, I've heard parents say, well, I'm just going to let my kids decide what they're going to do. Well, that's, that's terrible philosophy. You know, what you're saying is, is God's an option. Eh, if you choose to not believe in God, that's okay. That's not okay. You know, so, or, or I don't want to force my kids to church. You know, I don't want them to hate church. Well, I guess you'd use that same philosophy with, you don't force them to school. You don't want them to hate school. You know, don't want to force them to eat, you know, healthy because I don't want them to hate healthy food. I mean, it makes zero sense. But when then we apply that to church, no, if they're in your, under your roof, they're, you know, they're 18 or less, I guess, you know, you have a responsibility, bring them to church. Now, now we're going to do our best to make sure it's, they, they learn a lot, they have a lot of fun, they, they grow, and, some, and you know, we're going to do our part to assist uh, our parents, but you play a vital role in saying, hey, this is important. So you have to ask yourself, you know, what am I teaching my kids? I have a, uh, another survey, I did this uh, last week. Uh, this one hopefully is easier to understand. I know some people are like, how does that work? So, but in this survey, just it's zero to 10, you know, if you're, if you're unintentional about what you're teaching, you're just kind of going through the moves, you give yourself a, you know, a zero or a one. But if you're really trying to communicate uh, godly values and, uh, and you realize it's, it's not, love is not enough, then you give yourself, you know, a, an eight, nine, or ten. All right, number two is, is protecting your kids in storms, in storms. Now, it's not from storms, because storms come. I mean, they come in our lives in all four, obviously, we just had Hurricane Ian, but I'm talking about, you know, emotional storms, physical storms, I'm talking about spiritual storms. We have storms that come into our lives, and they they batter us, they bruise us, they, they, they beat us down. And kids need a place where there's some security, where there's some safety, where there's protection, where there's restoration. All those things are really important. It says, reverence for the Lord gives a man deep strength. His children have a place of refuge and security. God's desire is that the home is that place. It's a place where you go, where you, there's safety. When we were growing up, when my kids were growing up, uh, we played board games. I don't think anybody does that anymore. But with board games, the, almost in every board game, the goal is to get home. Because when you're home, you're safe. And that's a good illustration about what a home is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a place where you're, uh, you, you go through the storms, but you go home, and that's where you can uh, you can get you, you can get to a place of safety. Three storms that kids often experience. One is just change. There's a lot of change. I mean, we're in a culture and a world of rapid change that causes stress. That's a form of a storm. And there's change with relationships. Parents get uh, divorced. Parents die. Uh, people move. All kinds of things happen to kids. The relationships. And uh, they, those change, that causes stress. S there's stress with school and the demands of school and in sports and uh, all kinds of things, right? We live with plenty of change and we need islands of stability when there's lots of change going on. That creates a sense of security and kids need that too. Is this a failure? A failure is another thing that, I mean, nobody wins all the time. You don't always make the team. You sometimes fail the test. You get passed over for the promotion. I mean, failure happens, and it happens to everybody, and it hurts. But it's more bearable when you have a place you can come home to where you get 
support. I love this verse at Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. If one of them falls down, the other can help them up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there is no one to help him. And so when we go through times of distress, of failure, other people can help, and a home can be that place. And then rejection. This is probably the toughest storm of all, where we get criticized, we get ostracized, we get pushed away, we're not allowed to be part of the crowd. And it begins on the playground. Kids can be very ruthless, right? I mean, they, they, they point out any kind of uh, flaw, any imperfection, like you didn't already know you had it, and then they, you know, use that to make you feel bad. And then a lot of times kids, they don't, they don't know the truth. They don't know the difference between truth and reality. And so somebody says something about me, so it must be true. And then they, we start to absorb that into our identity. As in a healthy family system, you can help create a barrier so that doesn't happen. You, pr- you help protect their self-esteem, how they view themselves, and help them process that storm. Now, the problem is, sometimes in homes, that the storm is in the home. It's not a place of protection. I know for for me growing up, that certainly was the case. Lots of rejection, lots of pain. I, I was physically abused, all kinds of terrible abuse. I mean, one time my dad sat me in a room with my mom crying. I don't know why she didn't feel like she had any power. And he goes, it, you're irritating me. And I, was like, I guess I was kindergarten or something like that. And he goes, you know, he goes, if you upset me one more time, I'm throwing you out of the family. I start crying. He goes, don't. And so I'm living on eggshells. So sometimes, and some, some of you can relate to that. You're in the, you know, you grew, grew up. In the storm, that's not good. That's not God's plan. Jesus said, a home filled with strife and division destroys itself. And so he warns against that. Certainly that's not God's best intention. We create a place where kids can thrive. They can do well. How does that look? Well, let me give you uh, four things. They all start with H. One is, is to hear your kids. When they're in pain, when they're, when they're going through challenges, you listen to their words. You listen to their feelings. You don't try to jump to quick solutions. Another thing is to give them lots of, uh, of uh, affection. You hug them, kiss them, pat them, cuddle them, uh, tickle, whatever. You're, you're showing behaviors that say, I love you. You are accepted. Uh, give them hope. So you build them up, you speak words of affirmation into their life. That helps counterbalance the negativity. And then also you help them. Look for ways to, uh, to help them out, uh, resolve some of their challenges. Uh, you don't make fun of their fears and their concerns, and you come alongside them and help them. So another time to uh, just kind of think, how am I doing at this? How am I doing at this? Uh, at, at pr- protecting my, my kids in storms? Do I give more pokes and strokes or do I help them? Number three, play with your kids for fun. So this is really important that you, that you create a place that kids enjoy being with you. Sometimes some, pe- some parents, some Christian parents, are so serious about the, that point one being a place of learning, which is, it, it is a place of learning, but sometimes they miss the fact that it should be fun. There's, I mean, sometimes it's, it's about balance. There would be sometimes I would show up at my kid's school and just, you know, you know, take them to lunch. Sometimes I would just say, you're not going to school today. For some parents, they would go, you got to be kidding. They're going to get behind. Well, you know, yeah, I guess a day, but I want to make sure and have fun. You know, listen, if you are a parent and you don't create a place of fun for your kids, Don't be surprised when they grow up and they never want to come by and visit. You you play a role in that. If if they don't have any fun memories, they're going to think, I can't wait to get out of here. And then years and decades go by and they they come out of obligation. And so I don't want to make you feel bad. I'm just saying, if you're a parent, don't miss that. That's an important part. You're not you know, like out of the sound of music, you know, Captain Von Trapp, you know, with a little whistle and everyone lines up and, you know, and, and, and that's how some people, that, that's their homes are run like that. 
you've heard the saying, you know, families that pray together stay together. It's also true families that play together stay together. Look at this verse here. Children are God's love gift. They're heaven's generous reward. A gift, a reward, those are meant to be enjoyed. Another great verse, celebrate with your whole family. He's saying, learn how to party. Learn how to have fun. Do what you need to do to, you know, to be involved in that. And people ought to enjoy every day of their lives, no matter how long they live. So if you wait until all the problems are gone, you'll never, you'll miss life. Parenting is a season. And kids actually are inherently funny. They do things that are funny all the time. If you're looking for it, you can get stressed out. I had other videos I could have showed, but I figured one was enough. <laughs> but looking for the, the, the humorous side so that you can celebrate with your kids and be part of that. All right. Let me see. I, I thought I had the questions up here. I didn't, but, you know... Quiz yourself on that one. You know, answer that little thing. How am I doing on that? Is that, do I plan fun? Am I going out of my way? Or am I, am I, too, am I too serious? All right. Point your kids to God. This is an important one. As I said, it's not optional. This is something we are expected to do. We live in a very confused culture. If you're wanting them to kind of figure out who they are in Christ by, you know, whatever they happen to go, you know, view on YouTube or, or on TV or through the movies or at school. It's just not going to happen. Or from their friends. You, as a parent, that's part of what you do. Fathers, it really applies to parents. Don't exasperate your children, but raise them up with loving discipline and counsel that brings the revelation of the Lord. That's an important part that you play in your kids' lives is you're looking for opportunities, moments, to speak into their life. To, and so for, for one of the things we did in our home is, is we had routines that helped that to happen. Our kids were in private school, and so when we would drop them off, uh, before, I, before they would leave the car, actually as we were approaching the school, I would just pray over, I pray a blessing over them. Now there's other things I did, but those were routines that I had, that we just always did. We would chit-chat on the way to school, but I would always pray, pray for them. At night, when they were, especially when they were little, we'd pray Psalm 23. Uh, that was just the psalm that I felt like the Lord wanted us to, to pray every night. We did that for years and years. They, they got good at Psalm 23. But, but, and then I'd pray over them as well. So having some structure. Now, let me just say, okay, my parents, I mean, my kids are older now. But I, and I'm a grandparent, do I have a responsibility as a grandparent? Well, actually, I do. The Bible talks about the value of grandparents. It says, you must be careful not to forget the things you have seen God do for you. Keep reminding yourselves and tell your children and grandchildren. You can only do that if you're a grandparent. And so uh, that's for, for a number of you. Your grandparents, and you have an opportunity to point them to God. So my my granddaughter is only one. I've already started though. I, whenever I visit, she comes over to our house. I have a routine. We sing worship songs together. Uh, I pray over her. Uh, we talk. We have some. We look at scripture. I mean, then we also play house and do some of the other. But it's not just play, 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 play. I mean, we talked about how important that is, but. There's also, as grandparents, part of our job is to speak into their lives and help them. To, and, and we get a chance to, uh, to uh, help them process that. Now listen, we don't know all the answers, especially as they get older and they ask more challenging questions. Why did God allow grandma to die? Why did my dog, you know, get run over? Or what? I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, some of it you can get on Google, some of it you can't. But we're not going to, we don't have, we're not the sum of all knowledge. We point to God. We point. God has the answers. Some of it, we might have answers to it. A lot of it is we're pointing our kids to God and our grandkids to God, particularly when they go through struggles and pain and, and, and challenges. 
Bible says knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. That's why we're pointing to God because ultimately we want them to be able to gain understanding for themselves. And it's not just God in general because there's plenty of parents, plenty of parents that, you know, believe in, you know, yeah, the, you know, the man upstairs, the, the baseball coach upstairs, you know, these, no, we point to Jesus. Jesus is the, the, the uh, is the answer. The Bible says everything else is worthless compared with the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. This is what we point to, how Christ made a difference, that every single person is, 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 it has sinned and sins and keeps us far from God. We end up having uh, being motivated by guilt and shame and all kinds of things. And Jesus washes that away because of what he did on the cross. And we're, we're always looking for ways to uh, reinforce that and point them to Christ. The whole family was filled with joy because they had come to believe in, in, in God. The whole, you see, God wants, he, he believes in family systems. And so many times, it's one, it starts with one person and then becomes, you know, transferred around all of a sudden. For me, I came to Christ. My brother led me to Jesus. And then together we led my other brother to Jesus, my sister. To, my mom came to Christ. My stepfather came to Christ. I'm still praying for my dad uh, and, and, and looking for opportunities to sh- share my faith with him. And, uh, but but that, a lot of times it's in a household. And God works through that. But we want to make sure the part we play, especially if you're a parent, that Jesus is in the mix. You know, I mean, is he part of the regular conversations in your home? You know, when you're talking, is he, a, is he a name that is, is used as regularly as, you know, Bear and Buffy and Trevor and Felix and Miss Rachel and just on and on? I mean, all the names. Or is, is you know, and, and is he used in a positive way? Because sometimes Jesus is used plenty of times, but it's, it's, it's used more of a curse word. No, we're talking, hey, Jesus plays an important role. I love this verse. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Well, I want to end with prayer. Pray over you parents. But also, let me just say this. Some of you, your kids, you know, you don't have young kids anymore. They're not at home anymore. They're out. You're going, hey, I missed that opportunity. Maybe you came to Christ later in life. And I just want to encourage you that it is never too late. It never is. Yeah, it'll look different because parenting adult kids looks way different than parenting uh, kids that are in the home, you know, elementary age kids, preschoolers, all that. But it's never too late. You have a unique voice as a parent as a grandparent, or whatever role that you have. And if you're open, if you have your eyes open, God will bring that across your path. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, I thank you that we have this awesome, awesome privilege so often to parent or grandparent kids We do it through modeling, some talking, a lot of modeling, helping them with their relational skills, teaching them honesty, vulnerability, forgiveness. And it's hard work, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Teaching them character, the value of working out their differences, hard work, integrity. Lord, I pray that for the kids that are represented in this church, those watching online as well, Lord, that you would protect our kids in the storm. Not from the storm. Storms happen. But in the storm. And that we can play an important part of that. We can offer hugs and hope, healing, all those things. Lord, I pray for those parents who feel like they're just too busy to have fun. 
It's a short season, really. So God says, celebrate it, celebrate it. If you've never asked Christ into your life, God will give you the power, the wisdom, the strength, the perseverance that you need in your life, particularly if you're a parent, but regardless of whether you're a parent or not. You're going through your own challenge, your own storm, your own difficulty. And then other people are, 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 are needing stuff from us. And we just so often feel so depleted. We don't have it to give. But God will give you what you need. You just go to God right now. If you've never asked Christ, then I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer to receive Christ into your life. But before that, just pray this prayer. Just say, God, give me the wisdom I need. Especially when I feel so depleted. When I feel like I don't have anything to give. When I feel like I'm in a dinghy in a storm. I just don't... There's only so many people that I can bring into my dinghy before it goes under. Give me strength. Give me wisdom. Would you pray that? If you've never asked Christ into your life, I'm going to ask you to do that right now. Because he is the source of the power and the wisdom that you need. And So if that's you and you're saying, you know what, I want to come to Christ. I want to experience what it means to have the Spirit of Christ awaken my mind. Give me strength. Give me hope. Then I invite you to pray this prayer with me right where you're at, with every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, you say, Pastor Andy, I do want to pray along with you. Then I'm just going to ask you right now, would you just put your hand up? Just raise your hand up and say, that's me, boldly. Yep, I see that. Any more? Yep, okay. Okay, put your hand down. Pray this prayer. Say, dear God, today, I put my faith in you. Give me strength. Give me wisdom. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Wash me clean. Give me a fresh start. Help me to not live with all the mistakes the guilt that comes with that, the the mess. Lord, just give me a fresh hope in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not done. I do have two last prayers. For those of you who are parents, I want to have you pray with me. You can can lift your your eyes up because it's going to be up on the screens. Here's a prayer that I want you to pray with me. Just pray this to God, okay? Can you put it up on the screens? Okay, here it is. Ready? If you're a parent, I want you to pray this. You can either pray it out loud or pray it to yourself. Pray this prayer. Dear God, I realize that my kids are a gift from you. I need your help as a parent. Help me to prepare my kids for life teaching them about relationships, character, and values, and modeling it. I need your help protecting my kids in storms of life. Help me to make time for fun with the family. Most of all, help me to point my kids to you for the answers of life. I pray that they would all come to know you personally. I pray today for the person They will eventually marry, that you will begin preparing them right now. I have a second prayer. Prayer for those of you without kids in your home. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Father, Heavenly Father, I realize there are a lot of kids in this world who need your love and are living without the care of a mother or a father. Today, I offer myself to stand in the gap to help any child that you bring into my life. I open up my life to be used by you to nurture and care and encourage children for Jesus. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well.